and welcome back to Crown Conditioning, where I teach you the basics of pageantry, specifically for the Miss America Scholarship Competition. I am your host, Avery Bishop, Miss Texas 2022. Today is a very much anticipated episode, an in-depth look into private interview with real life examples. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I personally prepared for private interview, my schedule and calendar, the activities and exercises I used, and I'm going to talk about wardrobe, paperwork, and leave you with actual recorded interviews of mine and Miss Texas Chandler Foreman. Hey, why is my face so big? I'm going to make my circle smaller. Welcome to private interview. Overall theme for today is don't panic. Here's a roadmap of the things I'm going to talk about in this video. First, I'm going to do a general overview. I've already covered the basics in the categories of competition episode. So go back if you haven't seen that yet. Second, I'm going to walk you through everything that I did to prepare for my private interviews in detail. Third, I'm going to talk about preparation activities and exercises that you can take with you and do so that you can prepare in a similar way. I'm going to talk about wardrobe and resources to shop and you know, find affordable options. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks. And then at the end of this video, I'm actually going to present to you my private interview the year that I won overall interview, as well as Chandler Foreman, Miss Texas, her private interview too. I wish I could include as many private interviews as I can, but for time sake, I've only included two. If you've already seen the beginning informational portion, you can just skip to those interviews at the end. First things first, a little reminder, overview. Your private interview for the Miss America Scholarship Competition is a 30 second opening with a nine minute Q&A and an optional second wrap up or closing statement. This year, the 30 second opening is brand new, but think of it as a social initiative pitch, 30 seconds to sell yourself and then you go into your questions. Don't let optional um, confuse you. Most of the time, Candidates will always take the optional closing, whether that be a rehearsed closing or to finish a, a question that they've been asked. Uh, you also have to bring in your paperwork, which includes your fact sheet and a community service initiative sheet. Finally, your private interview is 30% of your overall score. Let's get into the details of what I did to prepare your mind is a muscle. You have to exercise it in the way that you want to use it. What does that mean? You can't just go walk into your private interview this summer or whatever interview you may have, be it a real job outside of the pageant systems and expect to do well. You have to massage that muscle. Practice doesn't necessarily make it perfect, right? We're not striving to be perfect. We just want to oil the machine, make sure that we are uh, exercising our mind thought process and talking approaches uh, well before we actually compete. So what did that look like? Again, overall theme of this video, do not panic. Don't let these spreadsheets scare you. I am a type A Virgo. So this is how I organized the way that I prepared for my private interview. Note, this was three months out. I usually prepare for interview, whether it was at state or nationals, three months out because I know I will burn out if I'm constantly doing mock interviews for six months in advance. I know myself well enough to know that three months was ample. Ample, right? Is that correct? I don't know. <laughs> it was enough time to prepare. Here are the things that I did. First, I created a friends, family, and other state title holders mock interview signup sheet. That is where you see the spreadsheet at the top. I didn't have money to like pay for a coach to work with them four times a week and do mock interviews. Instead, I had people involved so that people can feel like they're supporting me in my process while also providing um, resources and support through those mock interviews. I scheduled mostly two mock interviews per week with lots of holidays taken off. Um, I organized a current events spreadsheet and tracked state related legislation using the spreadsheet below. And I color coded it according to the type of current event, whether that be international, domestic, whether that be state legislation. Fourth, I listened to news and philosophical podcasts. I was listening to NPR, The Daily, etc. I journaled. I wasn't consistent, but I journaled. And finally, this is something that I'm going to encourage you to do. I wrote a list of miracle moments and memorized them. These are essentially your non-negotiable stories that need to be heard by the judges. And no matter what questions are asked, these are the stories you're going to bring into the interview room because they sell you and the skill sets that you have. 
This is everything I did. By no means am I telling you this is the way to do it in order to win. This is what worked for me. Take what you think will work for you and apply it to whatever system you're going to use to prepare. Here is what scheduling my mock interviews looked like. This was November before Miss America last year. Uh, if you're watching this, that was 2022. Note down here, for example, I had mock interview MAO prep at 5 p.m. I would schedule mine, my interview, my mock interviews on, I think usually Mondays and Wednesdays. And there were lots of weeks where I only did one. But if you can't hold yourself accountable, that's okay. Okay, we're all not like stupid disciplined. Utilize a calendar, have alarms set, and involve people like your friends and family so that there's a little bit of extra spice, a little bit of an expectation from others that you have to show up to your mock interviews. Remember, this is all meant to massage and work your muscle, which is your mind. You have to know what it feels like to stand slash sit in a 10, 10 minute private interview if you're not used to it. Here's how I avoided burnout. Yes, I started prepping three months out. Yes, I did an average two mock interviews per week, but two weeks before the actual competition, I cut it. Nothing happened. I focused on my mental health. Um, and I did like a few, a hand, maybe just one round table, casual round table, which is essentially a group of people just talking about current events and listening to their opinions on what's going on in the world. This is an example of the miracle moments sheet I talked to you about and the one thing I encourage you to do. If there's one thing you're going to leave with today from this episode, sit down and write out your five non-negotiable stories that you're going to bring into the interview no matter the question. I organized it by topic, story, and how those stories connected to the job I was interviewing for. Here are action steps and exercises that you can do to practice. Remember, nothing's gonna happen. Sure, you're gonna watch this video and think, oh, I did like 10 minutes of work, sure. You gotta go and do the work, guys. You gotta put in the time and energy. You can't just like watch a video and be like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> so here it is. Again, write out five of your favorite life stories that showcase your skill sets, connect them back to the job. This might take like two hours and they don't have to be the same. Sometimes your stories change throughout the year, but make sure you have those five stories ready in your back pocket when you walk into that room. Make them maybe a paragraph each memorize them, have them rehearsed. And you're going to hear people say like, you don't like have canned answers. Don't memorize and rehearse your answer. You need to know what you're going to say guys. Okay. That means writing your answers out. That doesn't necessarily mean recite them word for word. When you go into the private interview, that means, oh, I know my stories so well. I have them so memorized. I can now change and adapt those stories to whatever question is asked. Okay. Find your favorite podcast to listen to. They don't have to be 30 minutes long. Find like a five minute condensed version. There are many podcasts that are like that. Do timed mock interviews. Don't just schedule mock interviews, actually time yourself, then film them. I know cringe. I can't bring myself to watch my Miss America private interview yet. I refuse to. And people were sending me clips of it through text message. I refuse to open them. I hate listening to myself talk, but when I was preparing, I absolutely watched myself in my interviews. I filmed myself. I recorded my screen when I did virtual ones. Film and watch yourself. I'm sorry that it's so cringe. <laughs> watch other private interviews using Padgett Live or other resources. Fortunately for you in this video, there are going to be two full length interviews at the end of this video you can watch. I Not that I'm gonna promote like unethical activity, but I subscribed to Padgett Live for one month and consumed as many private interviews as I possibly could. And then I canceled my subscription, <clears throat> but you didn't hear that from me. At the end of all these action steps, if you want more practice, rehearse answers to the most basic interview questions. In addition to writing your miracle moment sheet, your five favorite stories, you certainly need to know or have a general understanding of your answers to the most basic um, questions. Like, why do you want this job? Or why are you the best candidate, for example? All of these exercises are actual exercises I use for real life job applications in the legal industry, for example. So definitely use these if you're also applying for like adult jobs. <laughs> this is the anatomy of an answer. You don't have to use this word for word or follow this formula, but if you're starting out, this is a great way to start. 
answer the question directly in one sentence. One, yes, no, here's how I feel. Two, provide a story, statistics, or beliefs supporting your answer in one sentence. Then for your final sentence, three sentences total, relate your answer back to the job of Miss Insert State or America, whatever you're preparing for. Let's apply that formula or approach to an actual example. Why do you want to be Miss Texas? First, answer the question directly in one sentence. I want to be Miss Texas because I love to grow people in communities and the scholarship is also very nice. Two, provide support, your beliefs, statistics, and explain why you think a certain way. Not only do I grow a vegetable garden in my backyard, but I also know how to grow businesses, nonprofits, social media brands, and partnerships. Number three, connect it back to the job you are interviewing for. As Miss Texas, I can continue growing the importance of diversity and inclusion across our state, which is much needed since we are a minority majority state. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. You wanna keep your answer condensed and short. Always lean shorter and not longer. You only got 10 minutes. You wanna fit in as many questions as possible, but feel the room. Some questions might deserve more time. Here, wardrobe. Here is a nice little lookbook of different interview outfits from the past. This is what I wore at Miss America. Um, this is what I wore for Miss Texas. Miss America again. Here's Mallory Chandler. <laughs> Jump scare. This is me from my first pageant competition ever. I raided my mom's closet. This is what she put me in. I was 12 years old. Here are options that I have shopped at before that have great interview options with the designated sort of money amount. I'm not going to read them through. If you want to look at them, look at them. Also note Shein, if you need to, no shame. Okay. They have pretty decent quality things on their website. Make sure you wear, wear it more than once. My final tips and tricks before I leave you with the actual real life examples of private interview. Practice in your interview shoes, ladies. Don't, or however you identify, don't go in with five inch platform, no strap heel, and expect to be able to give a interview. Do it in the shoes you're going to wear. Don't watch interviews of other candidates in your state unless you really want to, but it's also a mind game. Remember, you want to be mentally strong. And if you're comparing yourself to other women who are competing in your class, then ugh. start a mock interview goop, 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 <laughs> with uh, other title holders. This is what I did to prepare for Miss Texas this past year. I reached out on Instagram and we started a group chat of about seven of us from all kinds of different states. And through doing mock interviews with my title holder friends, I was also um, able to form those relationships and see them compete in their own states and be successful. It was really cool. Lean towards shorter, not longer answers. Remind yourself you control the interview through your answers and the paperwork that you submit. Don't submit paperwork on things that you don't know. Guys, don't go, guys, sorry, I need to stop using those pronouns. They're not guys, human beings. Don't submit paperwork where you talk about where you like, expound about a certain experience and then you go in there and you don't actually know what you did or you forgot or you actually didn't do it right submit paperwork that is concise brief short to the point and include talking points that you want to talk about sure you can list everything you've ever done since middle school but don't list the things that are important to you and that apply to the job keep it within that one page that one world because the judges can't ask anything outside of that paperwork aside from current events etc finally it's okay to not know you don't need to know all the answers those spreadsheets you saw remember the general theme of today don't panic <laughs> you don't need to know the answers and the interview you're about to watch where i won overall interview i didn't know the answer to a question it was like term limits you're about to see it and i had no idea so i kind of was like I, I i think they have term limits but if they don't here's my answer you don't need to know everything. You're okay. Take a deep breath. Finally, the greatest way to practice and to learn is to watch and listen. I probably watched about 60 private interviews through my time preparing for Miss Texas, not in just one year, but over the three years, I've seen a total of about 60. And you're about to watch two if you stick around. The year that I won overall private interview, I did not win Miss Texas. That's all to show that this competition, I want to remind you, 
is so subjective. And sometimes it comes down to the right time, right place, right judges. Um, but since I won private interview that year, I was so proud. I felt incredible. I felt so confident. Um, and I was okay walking away, not having won that year because I came and destroyed, you know, anyways, so enjoy these examples. You can find more on pageantslive.com in the next episode. I'm going to jump into talent with more detail. All right, bye. Enjoy. Hey, my name is Avery Bishop and I miss Dallas. Welcome. Thank you. I know. <laughs> it must have been all these. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> On your uh, page here about your platform, you said that racial differences and cultural diversity are things that are, are not things that are meant to be overcome. Can you expand? Sure, absolutely. As a woman of color and a first generation law student, I've been told time and time again that the way that I look, the shape of my eyes and where I come from should be challenges that I have to overcome. When in reality, they have shaped me into the person that I am today. I don't look back at them as challenges, rather uh, personalities and opportunities to become the person I am standing in front of you. And that's what I mean by uh, what I wrote in my platform statement. So what are your thoughts on the critical race theory and should it be taught in school? Sure, as a human rights major in undergrad, I was taught CRT when I was a sophomore. Uh, CRT has become weaponized by certain political parties and oftentimes we fear what we don't know. And a lot of people don't know what CRT is. As someone who has been taught it in undergrad, I do not know the entirety of CRT. This bill is a step in the wrong direction, but I will say that as Ms. Dallas and as Ms. Texas, I will continue to teach my curriculum about the importance of cultural appreciation and diversity from the standpoint of empathy. For example, one of my school programs I have many at six to seven in my back pocket. But when I go into schools to talk about diversity and inclusion, I have food field trips. I mean, who doesn't love food, right? So these students have a cultural potluck with me. I ask them to bring their favorite snacks or recipes that are served at certain traditions by Memo or Mimi, and they bring in their food and we gather all the desks together. We make one table, we sit down, and we share, little third graders, who, what, when, where, and why that food is created around a certain time of the year. And it teaches these children that despite all the different spices and flavors and the colors of this food, we can come together at one table and celebrate what makes us different. So you're running for office in 22. Mm-hmm. What <laughs> office? Uh, school board of DISD. I actually met with the mayor of Dallas last Wednesday and we spoke about the CRT bill. I told, told him about the uh, things I've been doing in public schools as Miss Dallas and he said, I better see you on the school board next year. And I said, absolutely. And then two hours later, his chief of staff actually texted me and said, do you want a spot on one of our committees? And I said, uh, let me get back to you after Miss Texas, we can let you know. Um, but yes, school board of DISD is the plan for 2022. Tell us about your work with the United Nations. Sure. So as a college ambassador, I'm a part of the UN ambassador program because of my international nonprofit. And I founded that in 2015. And it's also exhibited in a local museum here in Dallas. I created a foundation that provides scholarships to students of color in Southeast Asia, but it has expanded so much more to include micro entrepreneurial loans, as well as agricultural and sustainability workshops. And so with the UN college ambassador program, I speak on panels uh, to college College students about how they too can become leaders and create nonprofits as well. What should the Biden administration do about the crisis at the border? What I would suggest to President Biden is to decongest the court system at the immigration border. As a future attorney, I understand that the legal process can be really confusing. I mean, I'm a law student and it's confusing for me. So what I would do is I actually would allocate more funding to hire more attorneys and judges so that these individuals who want to be a part of our community who don't want to come here, but have to come here because of the circumstances that they're coming from, are given a legal process that is fast, efficient, and fair. So how do you feel about the new gun law that Governor Abbott has? What I will say is that you would not want a doctor working on you without a license. <laughs> uh, I have a brother who serves in the US Army right now, private first class bishop. He's taught me how to load aim and shoot a gun. But I don't have a license and I don't think I ever will. 
He understands the importance that not everyone needs access to a gun, uh, but the individuals that do should have training and education. And that bill is a step in the wrong direction. When I run for office, I would hope to uh, make sure that everyone has the proper education to know when and where to use the firearm. Okay, so I'm looking for something to watch on Netflix. Okay. What, what would you recommend that I binge watch? Okay, so it's not on Netflix, but Handmaid's Tale on Hulu. Oh, oh yes. Okay, did you watch the last season? <laughs> I won't get started because I can talk about it all day. <laughs> oh no, Miss Shirley over here is like, what's Handmaid's Tale? <laughs> and what was the latest book you read? Becoming 31. Yeah, or Becoming 30. Oh, Becoming 30. Becoming by Michelle Obama, y'all. Why was there a number in there? Becoming. <laughs> Just Becoming. <laughs> it's a great New Zealand Olympic athlete. Mm -hmm. Weightlifting. Mm -hmm. Born male, transitioned into being female, expected to medal. Mm -hmm. Should she be allowed to compete? Yes. Every space should be inclusive, regardless of how they identify. And we can implement daily acts of kindness every day. And the way that we can implement daily acts of kindness is to respect how people identify. And in that way, we can include this individual who wants to do weightlifting or ice skating or be on a public school soccer team who may identify in a different way. So yes, she should be allowed to compete. So since you're ready for all Yes, over here. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm a fielding like a, like a, okay. Uh, since you're running for office, yes. uh, how do you feel about term limits? There should be one for Governor Craig Abbott. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, well, really just for any governor, right? I want more perspectives in office. And when there is no term limit, there is one for the United States president, why shouldn't there be one for the state of Texas? And as I run for perhaps uh, public office, I would love to have a term limit on the office of governor. What about for I believe they already have term limits, if I'm not mistaken. I want to say that U.S. Congress is maybe like you can run twice for a six year period, uh, but if there is not a term limit, I would implement one just to make sure that we're getting enough diverse, diverse voices in public office. Who is the The authentic Avery Bishop is a TikToker who knows how to throw it back. Um, and I can teach you how to do some TikTok dances. But for me, the most authentic part of social media is the fact that I can sit in my car after a long day, no makeup, no hair done, and for example, if something has happened in the news or I've experienced something in court that I did not like, I can share openly and honestly in 30 seconds with my followers. And they appreciate and respect that I can come on unedited, unfiltered, and just speak my mind. If you could trade places with anyone, living or dead, who would it be and why? Trading places, dead or alive? Yep. Dolly Park. Mm. Dolly Park. I mean, absolutely no reason but Dolly Park. <laughs> no reason? Well, okay, she's fantastic as a philanthropist. She, for the past year during the pandemic, has given more than 75% of her estate to research to make sure that all of us are safe and healthy during the pandemic. And I appreciate that she's taken her platform, right, just as Miss Texas would do, and invest in her community to make sure that everyone is safe and secure. Okay, I've got to ask you for a follow-up question, okay. Dolly Parton. Sure. You've obviously got opinions about politics. You're going to run for office. Sure. Dolly Parton is the one celebrity who absolutely will not share any of her political beliefs whatsoever at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that or not? You know, we live in the United States, and everyone to each their own should be allowed to keep their political views private if they so choose to. But I am of the opinion that if we wish to become more united as a community, unity through diversity is my platform, as Ms. Dallas and perhaps as Ms. Texas, I think it's important that we are brave and courageous enough to come out and say, you know, what we believe in, the morals that we have, the values that we have, because then we can begin to have conversation and heal from past trauma or past terrible conversations we may have had. What are your thoughts on the cancel culture? It's not new. It's been happening around us a couple years ago. When I was growing up, uh, they canceled Harry Potter because there were witches in it. Uh, cancel culture is appropriate in certain situations, not always. Uh, when the time calls for it, it really is about accountability and the actions you take and the reper repercussions that come from that. I personally believe that it is a tool that our younger generation uses to make sure that, for example, politicians, celebrities, people who take the chance to speak their mind, but may have, for example, discriminated against a certain community, 
these younger generations can hold them accountable for what they say and turn it into a teaching moment, like what I typically do in social media. A new law would, again, back to your question about putting term limits on certain positions, that would be one of them. But I would also like to allocate more funding to performing arts and access to college. I would actually create a bill that would allocate more funding to students who want to go into college but simply can't afford it. For example, here in Texas, I would make the first two years of community college free. What is your stance on the funding employees? It should be demilitarized first. I do not believe that police officers should have guns and not be able to use them in certain situations where they're not trained to de-escalate certain circumstances. Oh, that's my time. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. It would be a disservice to not tell you that I'm ready, not just for 365 days as Miss Texas or Miss America, but for a lifetime. I can impact communities across the state of Texas and across the world. And I can do this by bringing in partnerships that I've worked with, like Disney and Microsoft, rebranding the organization, and bringing my platform into public schools, my six to seven different ones that I keep in my back pocket. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I'll see you all later. Thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good morning, good afternoon. I'm Chandler Foreman, Miss Park Cities, and y'all don't know how much I've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> Hey, Chandler. Hey. That's a pretty name. Thanks. I get to ask your first question. Uh, I know you, you a mentor, heavily yeah. involved in mentor. What's the biggest takeaway you want to, the girls to take away from uh, your mentorship? Mm -hmm. Most importantly, one of the greatest moments I've had thus far is my precious mentee, Kennedy. She notified me during our Pillow Talk event that I'll get to talk to y'all about later, hopefully, that she said the words to me, Chandler, thank you for encouraging me to be my authentic self, to tap into who I am and why God created me. And so I realized in that moment, not only was that my purpose, to instill in these girls to be 100% their authentic selves, but to engage engage in every interaction with anyone they're put in front of. That's my mission as Chandler, Miss Park Cities, whatever, to encourage these girls to be leaders, but to be themselves. That's the way that we inspire other people. Is this, is this your authentic self? This is me, okay? To be a little honest, my fro was a little bigger before I walked in here. <laughs> but I got a little nervous. I got the jitters, and my fro shrank. But this is all me. <laughs> this is all me. <laughs> I want to know, know how many people try to tell you how you should wear your hair. Oh, my gosh. OK, you want all the stories of the modified version. Because I'll get, OK, I'll give you this, and I'll give you this one. So at first, my aunt, because she's a little older, she's baby boomer generation, she's not really with the fro, the natural, the natural style. So she said, Chandler, at Miss Texas, you don't need to wear that fro. You need to straighten it out. You know that's how they're going to accept you. And I said, now you're supposed to be my encourager. She, you, you was born in Jackson 5 era. You should be appreciating this. And she said, she said yeah, Chan, but I, if you want to listen to your aunt, I'm older, I'm wiser, wear your straight hair. I said, OK, sure, aunt. Sure ain't pudding. So then I prayed on it. Here I am. I clearly didn't listen to her. But I told you earlier, my mission is about being my authentic self. And this is what God created on my head, so I got to work it however I can. Chandler, I am intrigued. One of your interesting facts. It says you've never been sick a day delay. Is that humanly possible? And how have you avoided ever being sick? I'm going to attribute that one to God. Thank God for that one. Uh, but also my parents. They have a great immune system. I have never seen my parents sick, let alone I've never seen my father with a pimple. And he had, and th seriously, I'm like, Daddy, I get all these pimples because I'm a, you know, I'm a teenager and going through puberty or whatever. And my dad doesn't even get that. So I would, I would thank my parents for that, um, for You've never been sick. No, I've never had a cold. And I've, I'm so thankful for it because I'm a very busy girl. I, my parents, early on, ever since the age of five, I was a musician, going out in the city constantly with different kids, uh, being an athlete for 11 years, running track, going to different states. You're constantly surrounded by a lot of things, especially in the air. So to know that I've never been sick, I can only thank God for that one. Tell me about your TV hosting. Yes. What, well, what, you, what part do you want to know? Please. What do you do? What's the show about? Okay, so my show is Let's Talk North Texas, and I was thankful enough to be three times the entertainment anchor, and my point, my purpose is to deliver the entertainment news, but it is a great start for me in regards to my career because my overall goal is to have my own TV show, but it'll, import, it'll promote, I'm sorry, women empowerment, young entrepreneurship, leadership, and especially putting Queen to Queen Global. Um, that is our overall goal. My sister and I is to have Queen to Queen 
Marketing Global. Do so, you produce it yourself? No, I don't, but I'll have the opportunity to next semester. Okay. Yes. Chandler, I'm going to make a statement. You take a stance. Okay. Pageant competitions exploit women. Hmm. Let me tell you what it has done for me. I come from the inner city of Houston, Texas, and not, not ever did I believe because of my surroundings that I could be anything, let alone stand in front of y'all today. I didn't believe that I could speak. I didn't believe that I could be my authentic self, let alone being talented. This pageant system has not only taught me how to be my authentic self, but to articulate my thoughts and that my story is important. And the way that you engage with anyone is by sharing those stories. Pageantry has only exploited me in a way to know, I'm sorry, I'm gonna cry, wow. Sorry, I gotta get together. That my purpose, I'm so sorry, my purpose is bigger. It's more than just the crown and sash, it's more than just pageantry. It's about these kids and it's about our leadership and our future leaders. For the record, I don't feel that way. Good you don't? Okay. Chandler, I'm gonna lie in the mood a minute. Okay. I'm in the music industry. Oh. I'd like to hear a little resuscitation of Michael Jackson. Oh, which one you want to know? Girl, you call it. It's all well, in case y'all didn't know, it is the 10-year death anniversary of Michael Jackson this Saturday, June 29th, on finals. So hopefully, yeah, 10 years, I know. And so I, one of my favorites is, can I sing it? Yeah. Okay. Living off the wall, life ain't so bad. Live life off the wall. Are y'all gonna join? Or... <laughs> y'all don't know that song? We don't want to ruin it. Oh, okay. I'm gonna let you slide. But that was my dancing. favorite. We just can't see our feet. I bet y'all know Man in the Mirror, though. Yes. Okay, okay, good. Now, who influenced your talent selection? So I was a fr I was originally going to play a classical piece, piece because I'm a classical flautist, classically trained musician. And <laughs> I was taught my first year that I came into the pageant system that, Chandler, you're technically great, but you need to entertain the crowd, right? And so that same aunt who told me to straighten my hair <laughs> said, I think you should do Diana Ross. And I said, oh, so you want me to do Diana Ross with straight hair? I got it. Heard. What sense does that make? So we exploited different uh, Diana Ross options, and so that's how I came up with the medley of, I don't know if I want to spoil it. Okay, I already, I'm already into it now, so I'm just going to tell It's different when I perform. So then that's when we came up with the rendition of Ain't No Mountain High Enough, um, and it, beginning with my mahogany theme. So just to let you know, Diana Ross will be on stage, not you. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, absolutely. So my sister and I, oh, I wish she could be in the room with me, but we have always been curvy women. Thanks, Mom. Um, but we came onto this earth, and we were, whether it was in track, music, we were always the thicker, the thicker person. And in 2015, Miss Kentucky competed at Miss America, and she looked just like me. The only difference is she had a shortcut, like you, Queen. And the comments about her were disgusting. They said, how could anybody represent our country when you're shaped and built like this? And I remember saying, oh my gosh, I look just like her, so do I not have a shot? And my sister and I put our thoughts together and we said, you know what? We are a queen regardless of our shape and our size. We were born into royalty when we got here. And so we wanted to instill that message in other queens. And so that has been not only my mission, but I represent the majority of the women in the United States being shaped like this. And so Queens Have No Size, our campaign was, we were able to sell merch in 47 states and to a soldier in Afghanistan. So I was so proud about that. And we're actually about to reboot, so stay tuned. <laughs> Taylor, do you feel that there are equal opportunities for people of all races in the United States if not, do we, uh, what do we still need to do to ensure equality? Yeah, I think it all falls down on understanding. There is a lack of understanding from everyone across the board. If we just take our time to visit the other shoes of other people, we can get an understanding of what everyone is going through. With recent events, we can see with the injustices and everything that there, are sti there is still a lack, a lack of equality for all races and all minority groups. And me, I'm fortunate enough. I do, you know, some people will ask me, you know, Chandler, do you um, regret being from the inner city of Houston? Absolutely not. Because that encourages, that drives my mission to not only notify others of where I come from and that there are still inequalities and disadvantages in certain communities, but that everyone needs to see the same thing. Chandler, how, do you do, how do you deal with haters? You want to know what I used to do? <laughs> I used to I used to call my mom because what I had okay a defining moment I was a freshman in high school and none of my family members has a gap right my I it's seven siblings I have seven siblings so I'm the baby 
And my grandma has one. My daddy doesn't have it. My mom doesn't. And so I was wondering, like, why did I have to have this cap, you know? So I'm thinking I'm cute because my mom told me you're uniquely, wonderfully made, scripture. And one day in my freshman year, this guy told me, your gap is the size of a football field goal. I said, oh. I said, okay. I went to the bathroom and I cried. That was a hater in that moment. As a freshman, I wish I could relive that moment so that I could tell that same student. I think his name was DeMarcus. <laughs> I wish I could tell him, DeMarcus, you are the one who has braces right now. <laughs> but me, on the other hand, I actually did my research. People with gaps are considered to be wiser. But I, and this would later tell my story and help me connect with other kids, which later on in appearances, I get so excited when kids are like, I have a gap too, I have a gap too, and we're able to connect. So now what I do is, I just look at myself and I just say, thank you, Jesus. Chandler, why you and why now? Why now? I think Miss America's 2.0 is all about the fresh woman, and she's a force. I don't want to be a face. I want to be a force. I want to challenge girls, not only queen to queen. I, oh. I'm going to finish that question. I want to challenge not only the young women like Kennedy, who said I encouraged her to be our authentic self, but girls in my community, boys in my, the community I came from. It is important that they see that image of someone who has experienced both sides of the spectrum, being able to recognize I come from disadvantage, and I'm able to share our stories. And that's the only way that we can begin to inspire is by connecting with our future leaders. And I've had the opportunity to do that so often as Ms. Park Cities and before my past your journey began with Queen to Queen. So I'm super excited. I'm, oh, y'all, I'm shaking. I can't wait to see y'all on stage. Thank y'all so much. Thank you.